This video will provide some extra background information to help with lab two on numerical methods. So numerical methods are a very important part of differential equations as a whole, mainly because there are a lot of equations that we can't solve analytically, or at least not in a closed form expression. Therefore, we have to rely on numerical methods to tell us what's going to happen to the solution, and how the resulting physical system is going to behave over time based on that equation. In this lab, you will see three main numerical methods that are used to solve differential equations, all with their different positive and negative attributes. Those three methods that you see will be Euler's method, which is the simplest way using tangent lines to numerically approximate the solution to a differential equation. We have the runge kutta method, which is more complicated but does a better job of approximating the solution. And then we have ODE45, which is MATLAB's built-in method. You'll spend some time in the lab working out the code for Euler's method. The code for Runga Kutta is given to you, and you'll use the built-in ODE45 to solve some problems. One of the main differences you'll see when we start writing the code for this is that these first two are fixed step size methods, where the code's going to take a certain step in time at every iteration of the process, whereas ODE45 is an adaptive method. This adaptive feature here means the step size is not constant, but when running the method, MATLAB will adjust the step size to how the solution is behaving in order to better approximate the solution. All right, let's jump into MATLAB and see what this looks like in terms of actually coding up this stuff. To do this, we're gonna look at solving the differential equation, dy dt is y minus t numerically, with initial condition being y of zero is two. Now as a side note, we can actually solve this one analytically by hand, and we get t plus one plus e to the t as our actual solution. Now, we wanna to try to solve this using OD45, MATLAB's built-in solver. So let's go to our command window here and look up what OD45 does and see where that gets us. So I can do help OD45. And the first option is usually the simplest case. So t out y out equals od45 of function t span and y0. od fun is a function handle. That's our anonymous functions. Initial condition y0. Integrate over this interval t0 to t final. Okay, so what that says is that if I want to code this, I should first declare my function, like so. And then I should set my outputs, t out y out to equal od45 of this function f t span, which we're gonna start at zero because we're gonna start at where our initial condition takes place. And we're gonna say we go up to 10 here. And then our initial condition is two. We can run that and it compiles, great, that's good. But the only way we're gonna actually know what's going on is if we compare it to solution. So let's put the actual solution in here too. So f sol is gonna be my solution function just a function of t and it's t plus one plus exponential of t. MATLAB doesn't have the constant e built in so you have to use exp to actually deal with the exponential function. So I can compare these on a graph. So I'm going to in black draw the actual solution because I'm taking t out or my t values from this od45 function and using them to evaluate my function. I could use a tighter lens space to see what happens. We'll see how the graph looks and decide if we want to change it from there. Do that in black and then I will also plot t out and y out in red. And let's see what that looks like. Well, that looks like just one graph there. That's pretty great because hopefully it means that the red one's right on top of the black one. To make this more clear, let's instead of plotting the OD for as a line, let's plot it all as points. Let's put our dot here instead to plot it in dots. And then we're gonna say marker size of two to make the dots a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on. Let's try this one. The marks of two wasn't big enough. Let's try 10. Better. So we can see that the black line is in fact there. It is exactly under this red line here, which is now red dots because of how it's determined. Now, if we look, it turns out these red dots are not evenly spaced in terms of the t direction. Right? There's a whole clump here at zero at the start where things were taking off. After that, they are pretty evenly spaced from there on out because the solution is very predictable. It's just growing up like an exponential and it, like OD45 recognized that and knows how to interpret it from there. 
But at the beginning, there's a huge clump of dots here, which is it's trying to figure out what's going on. And that's the benefit of an adaptive method, right? It's going to be willing to put extra points in places where it needs to figure things out and space them out more when it's allowed to do otherwise. To sort of be more particular, like if I look at the actual t out variable in the command window here, like after a while, they're about spaced by 0.2. 0 0.25 here, 0 0.2 up here, 0 0.25 here. Like, so it's sort of alternating between 0 0.2 and 0 0.25 for a while. But at the beginning, we've got a whole bunch of points right near zero. So any other method, like the Euler's method or the Rangakata method, won't do this because they're all fixed step size. They don't have the ability to adjust the step size where it's needed. As an adaptive method, ODE45 can adjust the step size to give it a better solution. And as you'll see, this got a really good solution in 45 steps, right? There's only 45 time steps here, and it got to be almost exactly right at the end point, at least up to visual inspection, it's correct at the end. That's really good, and things like Euler's method that aren't adaptive will need much, much more steps to get to that point and that level of accuracy. How would we actually talk about error for this type of situation? Well, for this lab in particular, we'll talk about error being the amount that solution is off at the final time. So I only care about the one dot up here. You could do something more complicated. We're talking about like the sum of the errors across the entire thing, or some sort of integral approximation to the error, but we're not doing that in this lab. For this lab, we're only considering the error at the final time. So how would I compute that in this code? Well, I could look at two things. Well, I have the solution at the final time. So I have f sol at the final time of 10. And I have my y out at the last index. So you can get that by saying y out of end. You could do a length thing in there as well, but end will always give me the last value. And this is my distance. So to get the actual error, I want to look at the absolute value of this difference. And now if I run this code, we said our error is 4, about 4.01. But the fact that this value is 2.5 times 10 to the fourth, 4 is a very, very small error percentage-wise. If you want to look at percentage error or relative error, you could also do that by dividing by the actual solution value. 0.02% error, basically. So we'll talk more about errors and what we can do with them in the next video. But this gives you the idea of how ORDE45 works, how to use it, as well as what these methods are that we are building from or building towards in this lab.